Please watch my prior video, The Luminiferous Ether, if you are still getting familiar with the properties of the ether. This presentation explains how those properties produce the fundamental constants of physics. The first few slides of this presentation are background information needed to understand how the luminiferous ether produces the fundamental constants of physics. According to 17th century theory, the luminiferous ether is a medium within which light waves propagate, much like sound waves propagate through the air. The momenta of random collisions among ether particles at the speed of light gives the ether its density and pressure. For convenience and in support of the 21st century theory of relativity, the National Institute of Standards and Technology defines the speed of light as an exact velocity in a vacuum. According to the theory of luminiferous ether, the speed of light is neither constant nor exact. Most modern physicists favor the theory of relativity despite the greater ability of the theory of luminiferous ether to explain physical phenomena and so-called constants. According to the theory of luminiferous ether, the speed of light is the average velocity of colliding ether particles. Future research may discover whether ether particles are neutrinos, quantum fluctuations, or something else. Nikola Tesla described subatomic particles as whirling ether. That whirling ether has a mass of the ether density times the particle's volume. The ether within electrons, neutrons, protons, and all other subatomic particles is whirling at the speed of light. Consequently, all such particles are black holes. Rearranging the previous equation is as easy to use the mass of such particles to find the luminiferous radius beneath which the ether is whirling at the speed of light. All black holes have a surface tension equal to the pressure of the ether times the radius of the black hole. The surface tension of protons is a significant factor for many of the fundamental constants of physics. It is easy to determine a proton's gravitational parameter from the Hartree energy of an electron times the Bohr radius divided by the electron's mass. It is even easier to determine a proton's gravitational parameter from the proton's surface tension divided by the density of the ether. The charge density of electrons is the elementary charge squared divided by the quantity 4 pi times the mass of an electron. Maxwell's first equation is a restatement of Gauss's law for electricity. From that, it is easy to determine the electric constant is the electric charge enclosed by any volume divided by the electric flux through the closed surface of that volume. That is equivalent to the charge density of electrons divided by the gravitational parameter of a proton. Similarly, the magnetic constant results from the surface tension of a proton divided by the quantity pressure of the ether times the charge density of electrons. That is equivalent to the radius of a proton divided by the charge density of electrons. It should be no surprise that light has a luminiferous radius of the de Broglie wavelength of an electron traveling at the speed of light, which is equal to the Compton wavelength. Consequently, the surface tension of light is equal to the pressure of the ether times the luminiferous radius of light. 
Just as whirling ether encapsulates the mass of particles, oscillating ether encapsulates the mass of light. As is true for all black holes, that mass produces a gravitational parameter equal to its surface tension divided by the density of the ether. The kinematic viscosity of light is a measure of the ether's internal resistance to flow under the gravitational forces of propagating light. That kinematic viscosity of light is equal to the gravitational parameter of light divided by the speed of light. There are many legitimate ways to express the derivation of the Planck constant. Regarding the luminiferous ether, it is reasonable to view the Planck constant as the kinematic viscosity of light times the mass of an electron. From the prior two slides, it is clear that the Planck constant times the speed of light is equivalent to the mass of an electron times the gravitational parameter of light. Thus, the wavelength of light times the energy absorbed or emitted by an electron is equal to the mass of an electron times the gravitational parameter of light. In other words, the energy of an absorbed or emitted electron is equal to the mass of the electron times the gravitational parameter of light divided by the wavelength of the light. For any given wavelength of light, the velocity of the corresponding electron before emission or after absorption is equal to the square root of the gravitational parameter of light divided by the wavelength of the light. The fine structure constant represents the transition between the circumference of an electron's orbit around a proton and the wavelength of corresponding light oscillations. Only at the Bohr radius does the period of the electron's orbit exactly equal the period of the corresponding light wave. Consequently, only at the Bohr radius can an electron absorb or emit light. All other physical constants derive from those already presented. Those listed on this final slide are just a few examples.